Hi guys, Rachel here with the Cackling Moon. This is going to be our tarot book club discussion. <coughs> We're going to be discussing, um, let me just get my cards in order. Um, we're going to be discuss discussing cards number 15 to 21, so the devil through the world, which is the last group of the major arcana, um, and we're going to be discussing chapter, 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 what chapter, chapter six, which is on page 110 of the 78 degrees of wisdom. Okay. So this chapter is the great journey, the goal of enlightenment. Um, <clears throat> I think we all have um, kind of a good idea of what enlightenment means. Um, there's, I feel like there's different stages of enlightenment in our lives, depending on what we're going through, what we're, um, what we're learning about ourselves at that time. Um, how many times are we going through the process, the cycle, trying to battle the bad, the good, the bad, and the ugly? <laughs> um, and so the, these cards are quite strong and powerful in pretty much like what they stand for. This last portion of the Major Arcanas um, is all about Facing your demons, facing fears, dealing with toxicities, healing, moving on from, facing your shadow self, um, learning the lessons. It's almost like you're achieving the purpose of your life. Um, and it's also kind of like the whole, are you willing to do it or not? Are you willing to do the work or are you not? And if you're not, then you're going to find yourself falling back backwards, going back into another cycle to once again be at this point where you're at and then faced with it all over again. Are you ready to do it now? And it's like, yes or no. So the devil card, number 15. Um, the devil is a representation of toxicities in your life, um, addictions and whatnot. Um, it's filling voids with material things. Um, the, the, the material things that can be one at one point they were healthy, but then at another point it is like you turn into um, you turn them into a negative. They become you know you you're abusing your power with them. You're abusing the purpose of those things. Um, <clears throat> the devil card also talks about the chains wrapped around the people's necks, and the chains are very loose. They are not tight. So. It's symbolic for the restriction isn't there. It's your, you have your control. You have the ability to pretty much release yourself from whatever um, toxic substance, person, experience that this card resembles to you in your life at that particular experience or that particular place and point in your time, in your life. So... Um, I did a lot of highlighting um, of the devil. Um, it talked a lot about the symbolism of the torch, the symbolism of the the, the humans being naked, and um, pretty much like the shape of the the devil, the five pointed star, and all of that. But I'm not going to get into all of that kind of stuff. I just kind of wanted to talk about um, um, the desires. So we have sexual desires. We have personal desires, passionate desires. And the church teaches a lot about these desires to be um, of the flesh, of the material. And almost to a point where um, some of our personal desires to do things in life or to, to level up in life or to be <clears throat> a certain way are looked at as evil. And so I, I wrote that off on a sidebar, like why does society repress our desires? So on page 115, in like the top paragraph, I highlighted um, a couple parts. I said, if, um, if the way to spirit leads through the desires, then why does society repress the desires? Way to spirit. So the way to spirit or the way to divine enlightenment, the way to connecting with God energy, the way to connecting with your higher self, you have to go through desires. Why does society make them... Un, like unapproachable or wrong or evil is it to limit us right is it to create this boundary point for us as human beings to not be able to reach a certain limit 
Are we trying to be controlled? Or is, is society trying to control us and chain us down? So it was like a different way to kind of see the devil, in my opinion. Um... I also highlighted in, in pink um, for a reversed a reversed um, definition of this. Um, if power is released and not transformed, it can result in obsession, sexual crimes, violence, and even the destruction of the personality. Um, so it's almost like when you're set, setting yourself free, but if you set yourself free, but it's not it's still not controlled and you're not taking care of it, um, it can result in an, again another whole level of bad habits and bad choices and whatnot and that's a negative that's like a reversed um a reversed way of seeing the devil so a lot of times when you see the devil people see it as an automatic negative just by the way it looks and it talks about that in the chapter as well um but when you really think about it the devil card is representing the acknowledging that we have inner demons that we have and when i say inner demons i'm not talking specifically about having demons i'm talking about we have things in our within our lives or about ourselves or in our relationships that we have to deal with and the devil card is pretty much representing those things and shining light on it so when you pull it in your tarot reading you are aware of it it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just pretty much like a gentle reminder, right? The Whereas the devil in reverse is more so the, the decision to, yes, I am aware that I have this issue or this, this toxicity in my life, but I choose not to do anything about it. I choose to still go on and remain miserable or remain entrapped or remain suffocated or remain unhappy and live that life, my life that way in a limited way. That's to me the negative, the negative thought of the, the devil card. So it kind of changes your perspective on the devils when you, when you pull the devil in the readings um, to not necessarily see it as an automatic negative. It is not a card to fear. So I really, really like this chapter because it, it pretty much like shined a lot of light on that. Um, okay, so another thing I wrote on, on page 116 towards the bottom, um, the devil signif signifies being the slave of your desires rather than acting the way you think is best. So you're being a slave to your desires. Um, it can mean controlling obsession, particularly a sexual one where the person feels drawn to commit acts he or she finds morally repugnant. So this could be people who deal with um, sex addictions or like perverse things or things that they may feel in there is wrong to them. Um, you know, this that card can signify that. Um, I, okay, so the extreme example is the sex criminal. On a much more common level, many men and women find themselves powerfully attracted to people they actively dislike. I was like, that's a whole different way to see it. Um, powerfully attracted to people they dislike. Is it because, this, the, to me, this is like, um, I'll use myself as an example. This is like for me going for, if I was still single and whatnot, if I were still dating characters that were similar to um, a, a, an individual that was very toxic for me in a relationship, why would I find myself in the similar relationships with other people with the same toxic person with the same toxic traits? And it's mainly because I haven't worked through my own issues. I haven't freed myself from the chains. So it was really interesting to read that bit. I was like totally into it. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about the tower because the tower card, this <laughs> the tower chapter blew me away. So the tower is number 16. It's the next card after the devil. The devil is the initial. This is um, supposed to get you to identify the toxicity in your life. The tower is the shit that happens. This is like when shit hits the fan. This is the chaos. This is God energy creating um, a, an amazing <laughs> transition in your life, which can sometimes result in like um, a negative happening. Um, but then there's always like that little blessing in, of disguise that happens because of that little negative chaotic destruction of your life. Um, 
So a lot of times when I pull the tower card, I usually tell my clients that it's sometimes it's a blessing in disguise. It may not appear like it right away, but usually the outcome of a tower experience is you realize I needed that to happen. I needed to go through that. I needed that wake up call. Um, I really, really, really love the tower section because I talked in great detail about the all of the um everything from the lightning bolt to the crown to the um the flames falling out of the tower like everything the why there's so many numbers of them everything so totally recommend you guys diving into this chapter about the tower because it is mind blowing um um okay so i wrote on the side note your own toxic nature becomes the tower ready to fall apart so your toxic nature the devil right what you identify you are the creator of your tower experience most of the time i put is the tower a blessing in disguise with a question mark i do see it i personally see it that's my opinion um some people may not agree with me i do see tower not every tower experience but most i do see them as blessings in disguise um Take this as an opportunity or a second chance to better yourself. So, um, so okay. So looking at the tower as a as an opportunity to it's like a second chance. It's an opportunity for yourself to redeem yourself, for you to come full circle and to like destroy something about yourself, the devil, right? That toxic thing, to destroy something about yourself. And have a do-over <clears throat> so a lot of times when people pull the tower again people will freak out because the image is so you know it's so dark it's a it's a scary looking card but it has such amazing meanings behind it um what else <clears throat> Yeah, so this the rest of the chapter is like a lot about the details, the the symbolism and all of that. I it's I'm, I won't get into that stuff. Um So a tower card in reverse are people who continue like I said like like similar to the devil. Even though shit happens and your life is falling apart, people still refuse to change. You still refuse to see the lesson. You refuse to move on from it. And you end up in back in another cycle of turmoil and, and depression and pretty much just being in a life that is constantly draining you and constantly going in circles and you're never getting out of it. It's, it's like the universe can create so much destructiveness into in your life. You're like literally people go through shit left and right. But if you're not learning your lessons and if you're not seeing silver linings in, in an otherwise very toxic or a very negative situation, um, many people don't grow out of this and they remain in it because it's familiar or it's comfortable or they feel like it's safe. So lots of heavy energy with the tower. Um, the star card. So the star card's on page 122. Um the star card is the peace after the storm. It's literally the calm after such a turbulent, such a turbulent couple of cards. You have this peaceful card of a bright star. We have the woman in, um, who is not clothed. She's completely 100% herself. She is pouring water out. She is, the stream of water is calm. It's like there's no storm. It's just peace. And it's supposed to, the star is like supposed to symbolize when you go through this process, when you see your life turning upside down, when you, when you are releasing and cleansing yourself from, from a very toxic environment or a toxic relationship or a toxic substance abuse, whatever it is that, that those cards resembled for you. And when you're actually going through the process of being enlightened and healed, that's the star. The star represents that. It represents you are pouring out within those jugs. The water equals emotion. You are pouring out all of the pain, all of the hurt, all of your feelings, your thoughts, your words, whatever this, whatever this is going to um, resemble for you. It's going to be different for everybody. 
Um, she's peace. She's, she's literally peace. <laughs> Healing and peace. Um, it was such a pleasant chapter to read. Whoops. My little bookmark. Um... We talked about um, her connection with the high priestess, with the empress. They talked about the star, like the pointed star, like why there's so many points and, and what that represents. Um, okay, so they talked about the star as like being like a, an angel almost. Humans, be, human beings are the link between spirit and the physical world. So we're like that medium, right? Our ability to both feel the truth and to act makes us vehicles through the truth, through which truth can manifest itself. The church used to describe humans as halfway between the animals and the angels. Usually a moral interpretation was given. People could follow their desires or their reason. Um, but we can use this metaphor to say that human awareness and action connect the physical world to the angels. So I kind of liked that. Um, it talks a little bit about why, how the... the um, just like the temperance card, the world has one foot on land and one on water. When I do my readings, I see this as um, a balance between reality and the emotional, which I believe that's how the book describes it too. The reality of two realms. So that's why they were saying like, as human beings, we're the middle point between reality and like the angelic state or the spiritual. <laughs> so we're like that middle person. Um, so it just, it's such a good chapter. I totally, totally recommend it. <clears throat> the star in reverse symbolizes channels closed when the waters of life are dammed, uh, dammed up inside. The outside can only become tired and depressed. So basically it's like when we close ourselves off from the cards, calm and hope, experiencing weakness, impotence and fear, um, when people are, you're, when you're going through, when you're going through this experience, rather than being enlightened through it <clears throat> and, um, pouring out what is within you, people who choose to clog themselves up with their fears, to clog themselves up with pride of not wanting to change because it's familiar to them or it's just, or they're not ready to give up such an addiction or whatnot. And then you have yourself a star in, in reverse. Somebody who is, re, is refusing treatment, somebody who is refusing healing, someone who is refusing to see um, the hope on the other side, the light at the end of the tunnel, that kind of thing. Next, we have the moon. Wow, you guys, this chapter was really, really complex. The moon card was number one, my favorite card in the tarot when I was learning the, the tarot, and it still is my number one favorite, but it is also probably the most complex card in the tarot, at least in my opinion, um, the moon is all about, like it could be about intuition and whatnot, but it's all about illusions. It's mystery. It is your nightmares. It is the making of your nightmares. It is facing your nightmares, facing your shadow side, facing yourself, but your truth. It's like your light versus the dark. Um, it's, it's, it is, the I always I always say to my clients that the moon it is the domestic and your wild side your your the the domesticated version of yourself versus your wildness. Um, they talked in great detail about the little crayfish or lobster or crawfish or whatever you want to call him. <laughs> he looks like a lobster to me, but um, I think they called him a crayfish. Yeah, crayfish. Um, and how he resembles like the scary stuff, right? And like they were, they talked about like when you're going through a trip <laughs> or a deep meditation and you're seeing these creatures of nightmares and whatnot. And it's like the, the little crayfish is resembling the fears creeping up back, you know, into your world. And it's like, do you face them head on or not? It's, it was so good. Um, there's a bit in the chapter where it talks about the moon and the moon's um, cycles within, um, in terms of menstruation and when, when, we when we menstruate and how it aligns with the cycles of the moon. So it talks a little bit about that. Um, the thing with this chapter on the moon, I feel, is you get a lot more symbolism explanation and like deep explanations of the card the the symbols and whatnot but you don't get a lot of like at least in my opinion i have to i might have to just reread it <laughs> 
but I felt like you don't get enough divinatory definitions. Um, so you're kind of reading it and then you're, you're, you're still feeling confused or at least in my opinion, I was still a little bit confused, <sighs> which is probably why the moon is so complex because it is, it's illusions, you know, um, it's, it's, it's your nightmares and reality. It's the mixture of the two. Um, so some of my side notes I wrote, learn to tame your demons and your fears um, women in menstruation, a fertile time, manifest abundance in our lives. Um, embrace your psychic gifts. No fear of what is, of what's not literally felt in a realm. So that's the other thing the moon card talked about was like when you are um, evolving and you're like spiritually ascending, <laughs> people will start to experience psychic experiences or supernatural or paranormal or however you want to define it. And the moon card is about, do you fear it and run away from it? Or do you face it head on? So I feel like, honestly, like, I feel like the moon kind of resembles when you're in this dream state and you are seeing yourself for what's, what your soul actually looks like outside of the body. And when you really think about it, it's like we have the body, we have our makeup, we have our skin, our eyes, the way we look, humans, right? But our souls, it's like if you really think about it, what does our soul look like? And is it scary, you know? And so I feel like the moon card kind of talks about that. The other thing I really liked was the moon card talked about being, so you have the towers. This scene is actually the back of the high priestess. So we have the high priestess here. And if you look in the background, you will see um, the water and whatnot, right? And it's basically what is hiding behind the veil, that veil behind her, is the scene of the moon. So I really like that because it's kind of like you finally get to see what's behind the veil. You're finally worthy of it. You're aware of it with the high priestess, but you're finally worthy of you're behind the veil. Only so many people are willing to go behind the veil because so many people are willing to see that or they want to know what's behind there. Really complex. It's a, it's a complex card. I feel like the moon can have its own book. <laughs> I'm really curious what other people's... um other people's perspectives on this card are. I would love to hear it, please. Um, another interesting thing about the moon card that came up in the book was the topic of um, like infertility. And I think it was the topic of miscarriage, if I'm correct. Um, I know it talked about menstruation, but I want to say it talked about like the opposite. But I'm not going to spend my time looking for it because it I could be wrong. But I do know that when I'm doing my own readings, like client readings and stuff, oftentimes like I do see a, a moon in reverse as if this is like menstruation in a cycle, I see this as the opposite where it's like an irregular cycle or an inability to conceive and that kind of thing. But just, I just came up. I don't know if that was in the chapter or not. <laughs> okay. Um, next is the sun. So after the moon, the illusions, the nightmares, we have the joy <laughs> and the sun symbolizes your literally inner joy. It is euphoria. It is being in a state of, of, of high vibration. It is literally like, to me, it's like going to heaven. <laughs> the sun is just nothing but joy. Um, it says youthful feelings, not literal child. So a lot of times you see the child and a lot of people will take it as a literal, like it's a child, but it's also the emotion of children. Children are pure. Ch children are not tainted. They are not, um, you know, they're not tainted by life and they're not tainted by like depression and they're not tainted by, or well, you know, children can have depression, but what I'm saying is like, they're not tainted with everyday adult realities you know what I mean? They're still innocent. And so I feel like that's why they put the child on the card. It goes into detail about that too. Um, but it is, a, it's a state of euphoria. Okay. Um, oh, I also put down, it is to have a new appreciation of life. Anyone who goes through this stuff, who goes through the darkness, who sees the light, right? 
will have a whole new appreciation of life. If you go through your own awakening, you're facing your demons and whatnot, you will not see life the same way. And so that's what the sun card is, is, is trying to embrace, that it is a whole new perspective on life. Um, you have a whole new appreciation for it. Um, so I, I spent a lot of time with the reversal on it because I thought it was pretty powerful. So the reversal I wrote down, not seeing joy in life and having to work to see it. Lack of understanding, appreciation, what keeps us from seeing this? So some people have the potential to see the joys in life, but they don't, they refuse to, or they, they don't have the ability to, or they feel like they are not worthy enough of seeing the joys in life. And so the sun card in reverse doesn't just mean a depressed person. It can also mean like somebody who is um, literally incapable of seeing the joy in life because maybe they had so much darkness um, in their upbringing and they had their, this, they just, their mind can't fathom it. So it doesn't mean that it's just a depressed person. <laughs> so I really like that. Um, I really liked that meaning of the reversal because it's it makes you think it's just kind of like we all have a different background we all go through different things and so the sun to obtain this state of euphoria you do you have to work for it and some people don't want to work for it or some people don't know how to work for it or they're afraid to work for it so really interesting i also feel like there's different levels of the sun so there's the level of like giddiness and happiness because it's your first day of your job or it's you're happy because you're in a relationship that's fresh or there's the ultimate like the divine awakening because you just had a vision with god like you know what i mean like there's levels there's levels to the sun Judgment. So judgment, um, page 134. So I wrote some notes for judgment. I said, being able to move forward with something of the past to change, forgive and grow. So when the judgment card comes up, it is usually a call or a wake up call. You are being, your, your attention is, is wanted. Someone is trying to get your attention, whether it's spirit or it's life or it's somebody, literal person in your life. Um, but to me, it is you, you are seeing the change that needs to happen in your life and you're willing to go for it. To me, the judgment is also, it's a new calling. It's like your ability to see the shit that you just went through and you see the silver lining. So you are able to, you're able to go look back at your past and say, okay, I went through this in my lifetime. But even though that was unfair that I went through that, I understand why I went through that because if I hadn't gone through that I wouldn't have learned this about myself that to me is the ultimate the world but it's also how some people level up and really see a joy and appreciation for life and the judgment you you hear the higher calling <laughs> you get the message um I also wrote down taking who you were in the past and becoming a stronger version in the future. So just because you were broken in the past doesn't mean you're broken forever. You know, if you're, you were broken in the past, you're repaired. Now you went through your process, you're healed, you're, you know, you're good. You have a better appreciation and a new outlook for yourself um, in a different sense, right? Um, so the reversal of the judgment can be, um, this is on page 137. Um, the person wishes to answer the call, but does not know what to do. More often it shows someone trying to deny the call, usually from a fear of the unknown. So again, it, there's a lot of fear-based stuff and that's what the moon is. When you turn your back on it, it's like you work so hard to get to this point and then it's like you're, you're facing your fears head on and you decide, I can't do the work. I can't do the work. You are refusing the call, right? And you're, you're going to pretty much cycle back down to probably the, the wheel of fortune, <laughs> the wheel of fortune level. Um, and it's like another cycle all over again. Um, there may in fact be a great many rational reasons why the person should not follow the suggested change, lack of money, lack of preparation or responsibility. So sometimes it's literally, you hear the call, but literally it's just not the right time. Sometimes it happens. 
it's just not the time you don't want to do it you because you don't want to or you're afraid or it's literally the wrong time to, to go through that and sometimes that happens okay we're already at 30 minutes so last but not least is the world um the world is the completion it is the cycle the ending of the cycle we have graduation day <laughs> Literally, the world is just the ending of this cycle, the ending of the journey, the ending of the ending of the lesson that you were learning in particular. Um, we are the essence of the of we are we are the essence of the divine spoken through actions. I love that. We are the essence of God spoken through our actions. Our actions are all of the tarot cards, all of the major arcana cards are our actions throughout life. Um, all of the, all of the major arcana cards are not throughout one single lifetime. That's one thing also to remember. These cards resemble one section of your life, one memory of your life, one lesson or one experience. You will go through multiple journeys throughout these major arcana cards multiple times throughout your life. Um... I also see the world card as having just a well-rounded understanding of yourself. You are completely 100% comfortable with who you are, what you are, what you do, what your interests are, what your challenges were, all of the above. It's like you have this well-rounded understanding of the self. The other thing that I really liked about the, the world is that, yeah, right here. So on page 140 at the very top, the paragraph, um, it talks about the woman or Shiva, I think she's, she's supposed to be um, Shiva, um, as a hermaphrodite. So it says the esoteric tradition describes the world dancer as hermaphroditic. I'm hoping I am pronouncing that correctly. The dual sexual organs concealed by the banner as if to say that the unity they represent lies beyond our knowing. And to me, I take it as we don't know the sex of God, right? We assume, but we don't know. <laughs> and and to me, in my in general, like God is an energy, right? So that we shouldn't place a sex or a gender on it. And I feel like the fact that the world card is usually in different decks. Sometimes you'll see the world card represented as both. Um, in this what in this case, she has breasts, but we don't see what the what the what the the scarf or whatever the whatever they were calling <laughs> whatever they're calling that. Um, representing like it's covering her genitals, the genitals. Um, but I have seen the world and I wish I could remember which tarot deck it was, um, that the world is a half, literally there's a half man and a half woman. And it's basically to me, it's just saying like, when you are godlike or when you are like, when you're the essence of the divine, there's no gender and there's no like sex to it. And I love that. I love that. I just think it's like, it's unity. It is equal equality and all of that. Um, it's not feminine. It's not masculine. It's both. <laughs> so I love it. Um, so anyways, you guys, I didn't want this video to be super long, but I, it's kind of hard to make it short. But that is the conclusion of chapter six. So... Monday, we are going to start the Minor Arcana. So Monday, I will be putting the prompt up um, on Monday for you guys, but we're going to be starting part two, which is the Minor Arcana. And I believe each chapter goes into the entire suit, <coughs> if I'm not mistaken. So it'll be quite lengthy, but like I said, I'm only reading, like I'm not reading... I'm not reading the introductions and I'm not reading like all of the other stuff. I'm strictly just reading about the cards. So if you are following along <laughs> and you feel like it's a hell of a lot of reading, skip the intros and stuff or read it at another time and just focus on the card definitions, okay? So it won't be so overwhelming. But I'll go through a lot. I'll make sure I mention it in the... um in the post so technically we're gonna start on <clears throat> part two which is chapter chapter seven and it'll be on page 161 which is where we're gonna start okay so this is like 
even though part that like the second part starts here this is all intro i'm not reading that so i'm just i just strictly want to start on the actual cards and we start with the quartz so love it so we'll um i'll be putting the prompt up for that and then we'll be diving into the minor arcana i'm really looking forward to it because i think the minor arcanas are a little bit more they're quick little blurbs rather than lengthy drawn out definitions so the majors were really cool you got in depth with the symbolism but the minors are not as crazy so it, it'll be easier to easier to handle for those of us who are busy <laughs> all right my you guys um thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the discussion i hope you were enjoying the book and i will see you next week for the next the next discussion of the tarot book club bye loves <laughs>